The Mantis' strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly Damn. evasive. Nah, he... <laughs> he knocked the f*** out that bee, golly! <laughs>
just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just a munching. He's just fucking going to town. Let's scratch the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to, though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. Silverfish? At the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect, and not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, which decided to respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined strategies, the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. Damn. Aside from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, with Damn. their only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their special ability allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to urban areas, feeding on things like paper and cloth, in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Even there, they aren't completely Bro. safe though. And what's crazy is, I, I've, I've like, I've seen a couple of silverfish some shits are so ugly, bro. Like, why? How? How are you still alive? How have you not been wiped off the earth at this point? You know what I'm saying? Just a genuine question. Cause like, how? You do nothing. You do nothing. You're like a, you're a useless bug. Wipe these niggas off. You know what I'm saying? You're getting packed up left and right by everything. You have no use for them. Just, just let them go. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta. The silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities places it firmly in F tier. That's honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Most insects are quite viable, and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably some of the most impressive yeah, camouflage, camouflage abilities yeah, in the sir. entire game. That's why they in Second, D tier. Walking sticks, I hate walking sticks. I don't think I've ever seen one, but they, that's probably why they, the only reason they're in D tier is because their camouflage ability, that's it. ...to color changing builds like the octopus and chameleon. As impressive as these are though, the question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? Because with the exception of insects, which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposomatic coloration strategy, Insects as a whole already have an above average stealth and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. <laughs> and while nah, they do nigga. mimic the movement of a swaying <laughs> leaf or branch, hey, that nigga's getting jiggy. Hold still on. need to move to find food. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more, rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. Some phasmids That nigga was getting it. <laughs> that nigga was jigging. <laughs> oh my god. ...who possess chemical defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, this attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. Although at least phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat, Jesus. with extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many Wait. of the larval forms of these- Wait, what the hell? Bees be fucking up butterflies? Since when? This nigga was on go! squishy defensive stats- That nigga was ready to fucking pounce. And utterly abysmal offensive ability. I mean, at least they're beautiful though, right? These. Many of the larval forms that of these builds oh, are 100% yeah, defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Lepid player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars and adult Lepids alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in, and some designed to intimidate. 
Granted, these strategies often don't hold up against high intelligence builds, but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, like spines and toxins, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility, and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas of the map, and reach higher quality loot that might be too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable for a variety of stealth or intimidation purposes, also just make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. Mm. But ultimately, Leopards still take plenty of L's, and most high tier insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against them. So they're definitely a below damn, average faction. Off this, damn. That's actually it for D tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively successful faction and are gonna be concentrated in the higher tiers. Hmm. Cockroach. At the bottom of C tier, we have the Cockroach. The Cockroach is the ultimate survivor, which opted to spec into mobility, stealth, and a multitude Look, of- Look, Simba, I'm sorry for missing the streams. It's all good, Kizzle, W4 months. I appreciate you, gang. Elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather that shit is ridiculous. They're clumsy flyers, but they do have an above average ground movement speed, enabling them to quickly scurry to cover if they see a predator player approaching. <laughs> oh, this nigga fly like shit for real. Look at <laughs> Look at the way this nigga took us. <laughs> Bro. Ground movement speed, at, enabling whoa, whoa. them to quickly scurry to cover if they see a predator player approaching. <laughs> However, when caught out in the open or backed into a corner, You're they're done. fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. They're also somewhat carried by human Ew. mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable Ew. for them. Because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Jeez. Fucking earwigs, bro. Oh my god, these are probably like some of the- like, what the fuck is this? I hate these things, bro. Next in C tier, we have the earwig, a fearsome looking generalist build, which appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end, called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage boy. they can deal is fairly minimal, and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. And even against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an Earwig, and can attack without restraint. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the Earwig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups against soft-bodied insects, and allow the Earwig to carry their targets much better than they could with their jaws. And while it may seem silly to have opted for rear-facing weapons instead of the more typical forward-facing ones like mandibles and rostrums, the position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows Earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid-tier, Earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. They this would do gross. well to spec into some sort of venom. Venom-infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid-tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. At the top of C tier, we've got the Orthopterids, including Grasshoppers, Crickets, and Katydids. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. It is annoying, for real. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. But this utility is lessened no? if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag. And so instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, 
A powerful jump enables the Arthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an Orthopteran can feel near impossible at times. Yo, what and the fuck? And even if a player does manage Damn, to secure- Damn, that nigga moved quick! What the fuck? Hold on. I gotta slow that down. That nigga was moving! An Orthopteran can feel near impossible. Look, 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 look. You see him embracing himself? Oh, bro, that nigga still got out of fr Bruh, he still got out of frame at 0.25 speed, dog. Oh my god. And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. Think, think, think. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal, meaning that if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation Damn, and escape. Damn, look at how he's just eating it out of the shell. Uh, he's just eating it out of the shell. Oh my serious God. damage to the attacker. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy, which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially if your Damn. local meta has a lot of spider players, and although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright or one-hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. Prey Mantis. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. At the bottom. I ain't gonna lie. Fucking Prey Mantis gotta be one of the top bugs, bro. For sure. From a B tier, we have the Hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, what the fuck? including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield-shaped. I I hate How these fuck them fucking stink bugs. I hate them shit so bad, bro. Including generally having high defense and those these shits are so annoying, bro. They're just like an annoying ass fucking bug. Being like somewhat shield shaped. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Damn. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. Damn. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility, making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. <laughs> Some do break this trend, though. <laughs> so what's up, then? What's up, then? Hey, psst. I'm not one to uh, gossip, but I heard you wasn't following me on Twitter and Instagram, and you wasn't updated when I wasn't able to post on YouTube and you thought I was gone. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's that simple. Enjoy the rest of it. Enough attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. <laughs> Some do break this trend though and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic mobility, making them some of the most fearsome what aquatic builds fuck? in the game. On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the name stink bugs stink, from. Yeah. However, similar to phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit lacking and often fail to deter attackers. So certainly a group with some standout members and fine for XP farming, but still nothing too broken. And topping off B tier, we have the Neuroptera, a rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats. Genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. Ooh, However, like looking at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. What? Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Damn. Ant lions have a devastating venomous bite, which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, 
their passive stealth rating is extremely high. So why did why change them into a different type of bug if they already in a, a successful bug when they're born? That's kind of crazy. Imagine being like you grow up into a weaker bug. Like you are a very powerful larvae. But when you get when you get like, you know what I'm saying, a little bit older, yeah, you you really ain't shit for real. You know what I'm saying? You was that you was that nigga back then. You ain't shit for real now. Making their ambush play style unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, making escape a near impossibility. That's crazy. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuropteran larvae, but in short, they are what the earwig pretends to be. If you took the earwig Cersei, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an antlion. So why the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really what? only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find each other and complete the mating questline, something they oh. lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level Damn. during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an oh God, absolute menace civilian. to encounter. Oh God. Ray Mantis? Oh, and only At the bottom level of B? eight here, we have a personal favorite I mean, of mine, the Mantis. I thought it was gonna be Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that yeah, the Mantis, Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically oh impossible. God. However, what they lack in movement speed they easily make up for with strike speed. The That's Mantis's strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered Damn. hopelessly evasive. Nah, he... <laughs> he knocked the fuck out that bee, golly! Quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets hey. that are normally considered <laughs> hopelessly evasive. As Yo. powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. Oh my god. And while the Mantis's large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. Damn. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, Damn, but not one tail. that's so invincible that Mantis mains Damn. can get careless. Fuck it, flies. Next in A tier, serious? we have the flies. This does get a bit confusing due to the amount of other builds that use the word fly in their name. But this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off, but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead flies of a second pair effects. of wings, flies swap them out for haltiers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a but hit on midair, and also enables predator fly variants such as the robber fly to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head-on, but are unable to effectively counterattack during flight. However, most flies are either scavengers or parasites, using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed to weave past the defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have, and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. The Dragonfly. The Dragonfly is similar to the Crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. Yo. It's already such an efficient build that- I'm not gonna lie. I just think the way that Dragonflies be flying is like, is is really, really like, it, it's just OP for real. I'm not gonna lie. It's just, it's just different. It's like, they be like hovering and then they be like, choo, choo, and then they like, it's like, it shit is, I'm dragonfly is him on oh God, fly, right? Fly like helicopters, but like it, it's just, it's crazy, right? They like drones. That's the that's great. That's better than even helicopters. They fly like drones. Across several balance patches and game expansions, 
the Dragonfly has seen very few changes Damn. to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary, as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs throw at it. So what is it about the Dragonfly that has given it such a competitive edge? Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and yep. the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most insects, dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that direction, meaning they can strafe mid-flight right, and they, even- They fly like, like, like how hummingbirds be flying. Fly backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, Dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod. Extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head, Jesus. granting them full 360-degree vision. Oh my god. This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease. 360 Yo, I really- I don't- Yo, honestly, bro, I'm glad we can't see everything. Because I- Bro, the way my mind would fucking wander, like wander, wander, the way my mind would wander if I can see everything at every point around me, I'll be like, yo, I'll be supposed to be paying attention to a video looking at the lights, but bro, hell no. And allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. Unlike <laughs> many of the other builds on this list, which either have a powerful larval form, but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve- If I get reborn as a bug, has to be a dragonfly. Watch, they go <laughs> they gonna make- <laughs> They gonna make you a roach. <laughs> this after no, enduring an extremely vulnerable early game, the dragonfly is a high tier predator in both forms. What? While everyone knows they dominate there's the skies- Wait, there's a water form of dragonfly? When they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game able to one-shot similarly sized fish and amphibian players. Now, while it was tempting to put dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. They're easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. Damn. In addition, dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. Not oh, that they devastating. Can't, they of a can't walk. Oh, I didn't know that. So anytime they move at all, you have to. That's crazy, kind of weakness. But it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. I should have known. First in S tier, we have the beetle. The They're beetle is the epitome of the insect thing, build. Bro. A bunch of extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, yet somehow actually end up Should... synergizing unbelievably right. well. Right, how can you fly? Beetles are the... You got like a... You, bro, you got like a... What's the name? You can fly. You got long ass... Like, that shit don't make no sense. Mere tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage, something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. Now, typically when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it fly. also excels in several other metrics. The most yeah. obvious of which is its power stat, Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive Slay. chemical weapons. Slay your their ability enemies. to bulldoze opponents with their forward-facing weaponry is hard to overstate. <laughs> but in my opinion, their real damage Surrender. potential comes from beetles which possess the ability to blast their attackers with a toxic or what? acidic chemical burst. But that's not where the craziness stops, because although you'd probably expect a high-power tank to be a slow, lumbering build, Beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. Really? And if that weren't enough, and they despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, packing a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to- Yo, what in the fuck? Uh, excuse me, Beetle? What the fuck are you doing? This- This nigga bowling? What the tank fuck Tank full he? of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle Look to- Look at this nigga! Oh, nah. They be rolling. Oh, yeah, they do be rolling poo. Dung beetles. Oh, that nigga is rolling up a man. <laughs> she said, oh, this shit finna be bussin'. <laughs> this shit finna be good as fuck. Oh, my God, bro. Move objects far, far above their weight class. 
The beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now they think it's a time for a snacky snack. Oh god. Did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles have essentially Damn, every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful. And so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. Really? They're so versatile and adaptable that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the oh. ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities is, ultimately the beetle is still lacking the most powerful insect ability of them all, eusociality. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no... So, I'm assuming maybe a B might be in, uh, in S tier? ...question that or the insects wasp? that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Termites, really? Now, technically, termites are a variant of the cockroach build, but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. Huh. The termite queen is the longest lived insect in the game, with a lifespan near that of a human or elephant. And it's spent- What? What? That- nah, that's crazy. Bumping out babies for decades? Oh my god. Spends these many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to construct some of the most well-fortified bases in the game, giving even beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run for their money. Not oh only God. do they build incredible bases, but termites literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge army and command vast territories. Oh my god. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, what dealing the heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. Oh my god! Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. Not usually an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation which covers the weak points of individual members. Hmm. So certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial insect faction. Oh, ants, bees, and wasps. Yeah. Ants, ants are gonna have to go oh, have a good stream. All right, Ash. Yeah, ants are OP. You know what I'm saying? Bees and wasps, you know, but ants... These niggas, uh, yo, ants are different, bro. Ants are, are literally different. Hymenoptera is the group of insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well-rounded, having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and rear-facing weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasps' signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. <laughs> I am fear. New social hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch Bro, organized attacks containing- Have y'all- have y'all seen those videos where like, um, it's unfortunate, but they'll pour like, metal into an- a, a big ant heel, like to just make like a sculpture? Bro. This is all, this was all, all, uh, ant built. You love those, bro? It's, th those shits are crazy. Just to see how, like, intricate the ant holes really are. That shit is insane. Like, them shits really, it, it really be like, wait, for real? Yeah, bro, you, you, we got, we're gonna look at one. They pour, like, hot metal into, like, a, a big ant hill, and then they'll pull out just the craziest fucking statues and it was just all the metal going inside the holes that the ants have made. Them shits look insane. Extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing Jesus. thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, 
cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. So while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants, termites and ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. Jesus. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. In fact, the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony, but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Wow. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN. W sponsor, you know what I'm saying? W sponsor, you know what I'm saying? W video, you feel me? Discount. It's risk trends on Patreon. And a hey, W, W vid, W vid. I ain't gonna lie, this terrify me, but I'm trucking through for you. Hey, that's a real nigga right there, Mr. Biscuit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bugs is scary for real. But the more you know, chat, right? It's, t it, it's learning time. You had to put on your smarticles and learn something. That'd be though from Tier Zoo for sure. <laughs>